Shalom and welcome back to Code Torture. And this is the Maccabees uh, edition that we're doing here. We're going to go through all four books and we're reading from the Sefer. So here we go um, from Maccabees 1. And so it happened that after Alexander, the son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Kittium, had smitten Devresh, king of the Persians, and Medai, that reigned in his steed over the uh, the first year over Yavan and made many wars and he won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth and went through the ends of the earth and took spoils of many nations in it so much that the earth was quiet before him whereupon he was exalted and his heart was lifted up and he gathered a mighty uh, a mighty strong host and ruled over countries and nations and kings who became tributaries unto him and after these kings fell sick and perceived that he should die where uh, wherefore he called his servants such as were honorable and had been brought up with him from his youth and parted his kingdom among them and while he was yet alive and so what happened was when Alexander got sick he divided the kingdom up, and you can find this in Daniel as well, uh, into four uh, areas, and this is what's taking place. So this is, uh, Maccabees is a great example of record keeping going on by the, these, uh, these Jews of the time. So Alexander reigned 12 years and then died, and his servants bore rule everyone in his place. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves, and so did their sons, after them many years, and the evils were multiplied in the earth. And there came out of them a wicked root, Antiochus, surnamed Epiphanes, son of Antiochus the king, who had been a hostage at Rome. And he reigned in the hundred and thirty and the seventh year in the kingdom uh, of Yavanim. And in those days went out of there Yisrael, wicked men, who pursued them many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. For since we departed, <laughs> how's that for smooth transition? Departed from them, we had much sorrow, for this device pleased them well. Then certain then certain of the people who were forward therein uh, had went to the king who gave them license to do after their own ordinance, uh, do after the ordinance of the heathen. Whereupon they built a place of exercise in Jerusalem, the gymnasium, according to the customs of the heathen, and made themselves uh, uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant. They joined themselves to the heathen and they also sold them to do mischief. Now, when the kingdom was established before Antiochus, he, he uh, though to reign over Misraim, that he might have dominion over two realms, over Egypt and Israel, by the way, uh, with great multitude and chariots and elephants and horsemen and a great navy, made war against Ptolemy, uh, king of Misraim. But Ptolemy was afraid of him and fled, and many uh, were wounded to, to death. Thus they got uh, the strong cities in the land of Misraim, and he took the spoils thereof. And after that, Antiochus had smitten Misraim. He returned again in the hundred and forty and third year, and went up against Yisrael and Jerusalem with a great multitude. He entered proudly into the sanctuary and took away the golden altar the menorah of light and all the vessels thereof and the table of showbread and the pouring vessels and the vials and the censers of gold and the veil and the crown and the golden ornaments that were before the temple all which he pulled off he took also the silver and the gold and the precious vessels and he took the hidden treasures which he had found uh, he had taken them all away and went into his own land, having made a great massacre, and spoken very proudly. Therefore there was a great mourning in Yisrael, 
at every place where they were, so that the princes and the elders mourned, the virgins and the young men were made feeble, and the beauty of women was changed. Every bridegroom took up a lamentation, and she that sat in the marriage chamber was in heaviness, and the land was moved for the inhabitants thereof, and all the houses of Jacob was covered with confusion. And after two years fully expired, the king himself sent his chief collector to, uh, of tribute to the cities of Judah, who came into Jerusalem and the great multitude, and with the great multitude, and spoke peaceably words unto them. But all was deceit, for when they had given him precedence, he fell suddenly upon the city and smote it, very sore, and destroyed much people of Israel. And he had taken the spoils of the city, and he set on fire, and pulled down the houses and the walls thereof on every side. But the women and the children took they captive, and possessed the cattle, and they built the city of, uh, and they built, they, excuse me, then built they the city of David with a great and strong wall, and with many mighty towers, and made a stronghold for them. And they put therein a sinful nation, wicked men, and fortified themselves therein. They stored it also with armor and victuals, and they had gathered themselves together with spoils of Jerusalem. And they laid up for them there, so that they came a sore snare. And it was a place to lie in wait against the sanctuary, and an evil adversary to Israel. Thus they had shed innocent blood on every side of the sanctuary and defiled it, inasmuch much as the inhabitants of Jerusalem fled because of them, whereupon the city was made an habitation of strangers and became strange to those that were born in her, and her own children left her. Her sanctuary was laid waste like a wilderness, and her feast were turned into mourning her Shabbatoth to a reproach to her and honor and to contempt. And as had been her glory, so was her dishonor increased. And so her excellence was turned into mourning. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote unto his whole kingdom that all should be one people and everyone should leave his, own, his laws and that the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yea, many also of Israel consented to do his religion, and sacrificed unto idols, and profaned the, the, Shabbat, the Sabbath. And the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, and, sit, and they should follow the strange laws of the land, and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice, and drink offerings in the temple, that they should profane the Sabbath and the feast days, and pollute the sanctuary and the holy people, set up altars and asherah poles, and chapels of idols, and sacrifice swine's flesh, and unclean beasts, that they should leave their children uncircumcised, and make their souls abominable, with all manners of uncleanliness and, profan uh, and uh, profanation. To the end of the might forget to uh, to the end that they might forget Torah and change all the ordinances and whosoever should not do according unto all the commandments of the king he said he should die in the same self manner uh, wrote that his whole kingdom and appointed overseers all of the people commanded in the cities of Yehuda to sacrifice city by city. They, many of the people, were gathered unto them, to wit everyone that forsook the Torah, and he also committed evils in the land, and drove Israel into the secret places, even wheresoever they could flee for help. Now, in the fifteenth day of the fourth month of Kichlev, in the 145th that year, they set up an abomination of desolation upon the altar. Uh, right out of Daniel, folks. This is where it's taking place, and they're recording it here in Maccabees. So this is where uh, extra-biblical books are a good cross-reference to and validate what happens in the Bible. Um, and built an altar, 
throughout the cities of Yehuda, on every side, in burnt incense and the doors and the houses and in the streets. And when they had rent the pieces of the Sepharim and the Torah, which they found, they, they found the Torah and, and Sepharim in the temple, they tore it to pieces. Um, and whosoever was found with any sephir of the covenant, or any, uh, or if any committed to the Torah, the king's commandment was, that they should put him to death. Thus did they, by their authority unto Israel, every month as to as many as were found in the cities. Now the five and the twentieth day of the month did they sacrifice upon the, al the idol altar, which is upon the altar of Elohim. At which, according to the commandments, they put to death a certain woman, and they had caused her children to be uncircumcised, and they hang their the infants about their necks. This is Antiochus Epiphanes, folks. This is a picture of the uh, Antichrist going on here. Hang children or infants around their necks and rifled their houses and slew them that uh, were circumcised. Howbeit many in Israel were fully resolved and confirmed and confirm in themselves not to eat any unclean thing wherefore they would rather die that they might not be defiled with meats that they might not profane the holy covenant so they died and there was a great wrath upon Israel and in those days Matanahu of Yachahonan the son of Shimon a priest of the sons of Yah, uh, uh, Yarif from Jerusalem, and dwelt in Moden and had five sons, Yachonan called Caddis, Shimon called Thassai, Yehuda who was called Maccabee, and Eleazar called Avram, and Yonatan whose surname was Aphus. And when they, when he had saw the blasphemies that they were committed in Yehuda, in Jerusalem, he said, "Woe is me!" Wherefore I was born to see the misery of my people and of the holy city to dwell there to dwell there where it was delivered into the hand of the enemy and the sanctuary into the hand of strangers and her temple has become as a man without glory and her glorious vessels are carried away into captivity and her infants are slain in the streets and her young men with the sword of the enemy and a nation was not had had a part in her in the, the kingdom and gotten all her spoils and all her ornaments were taken away of a free woman she has become a bond servant and behold our sanctuary even our beauty and our glory is laid waste and other people have profaned it and what end therefore shall we live any longer then Matanyahu with his sons rent their clothes and put on sackcloth and mourn very sore and meanwhile the king's offices such as compelled the people to revolt came into the city of Monan to make them sacrifice and many of Israel came unto them uh, as well Matthew and his sons came together and then answered the king's officers and said to, to, to them Matthew on this wise you are a ruler and an honorable and great man in this city and strengthened with his sons and brethren now therefore come you first and fulfill the king's commandment like all that heathen had done and yea the men of Yehudah also and such as remain in Jerusalem and shall you and your house be the number of the king's friends and you and your children shall be honored with silver and gold and many rewards then Matthew answered and spoke with a loud voice through all the nations that are under the king's dominion obey him and fall away every one from their faith of their fathers and gave commandments to his commandments yet will I and my sons and my brethren walk in the covenant of our fathers far be it that we should for forsake the Torah and the ordinances we shall not hearken to the king's words nor go forth uh, from our faith either on the right or the left hand neither when we uh, neither when he and had left speaking these words there came one of the Yehudim in the sight of all to sacrifice on the altar which was in Moden according to the king's commandments which thing Matanyahu saw and was inflamed with zeal and his mind trembled neither could he forbear to show his anger according to judgment 
wherefore he ran and slew him upon the altar. Also the king's commissioner, who compelled men to sacrifice, he killed at that time, and the altar he pulled down, thus dealt zealously for the Torah of Elohim, uh, like as uh, Pineket and Zimri, the son of Shalom, and Matiyahu cried throughout the city with a loud voice, saying, Whosoever is zealous of the Torah and maintains the covenant, let him follow me. So that he and his sons fled into the mountains and left all that, had, that they had in the city. And they, many that sought after just, justice and judgment, went down into the wilderness to dwell there. Both they and their children and their women and their cattle, because of afflictions, increased sore upon them. Now when the king's, uh, when it was told to the king's servant and the host that was at Jerusalem, the city of David, that certain men who had broken the king's commandment had gone down into the secret places of the wilderness, they pursued after them with a great number. Having overtaken them, they camped against them and made war against them on the Sabbath. And they said unto them which they had done thereto suffice come forth and do according to the commandment of the king and ye shall live but they said we will not come forth neither will we do the king's commandment to profane this sabbath so they went to the battle uh, into battle with all speed howbeit they answered them not neither cast they a stone at them nor stopped the places where they had hid but said let us all die in our innocency Heaven and earth will testify for us that ye put us to death wrongfully. So they rose up against them in battle on the, on the Shabbat, and they slew them with their women, their children, and their cattle, and the number of a thousand people. Now when Matanahu and his friends understood thereof, they mourned for them right sore. And one of them said to another, If we do also as our brethren have done, and fight not for our lives and for Torah against the heathen, they will now quickly root us out of the earth. And all the time thereof they decreed, saying, Whosoever shall come to make battle with us on the Sabbath, we shall fight against him, neither will she, we will fight against him, neither will we die all as our brethren that are that were murdered in the secret places. They came unto him a company of Hasmoneans, who were mighty men of Israel, even all such as were voluntarily devoted to Torah, and all that they fled for persecution, joined themselves unto them, and were to stay unto them. So they joined their forces, and smote sinful men in their anger, and wicked men in their wrath. But the rest fled to the heathen for help. Then Matthew with his friends went round about, and pulled down the altars. And what children whatsoever they found within the coast of Israel uncircumcised, those they circumcised valiantly. And they pursued also the proud men, and the and the work of prospered in their hand. So they received excuse me, then they recovered the Torah out of the hand of other people, and out of the hand of kings, neither suffered they sinner to triumph. Now when it came time to draw near that Matthew should die, he said unto his sons, now has pride and rebuke gotten strength and the time of destruction and wrath of indignation. Now therefore, my sons, be zealous for Torah and give your life for your covenant of your fathers. Call to remembrance what acts your fathers did in their time, so ye shall receive great honor in their lasting name. Was not Abraham found faithful in temptation and it was imputed unto him for righteousness? Joseph, at the time of distress, kept the commandment and was made Lord of Mitzurim. And uh, what is this word? Benayak, the father of the zealous and the fervent, obtained the covenant of an everlasting priesthood. Yeshua, for fulfilling the word, and was made a judge in Israel. And Caleb, for bearing witness before the assembly, received the heritage of the land. And David, for being merciful, possessed the throne of an everlasting kingdom. Yahoo, for being zealous 
and fervent for the Torah was taken up into heaven, and Canaan Yahu and Azariah, Azarahu and Mishrael, by believing they were saved out of the flame, Daniel, for his innocence, was delivered from the mouth of the lions, and thus considered ye throughout the all ages that none that put their trust in him shall be overcome. Fear not the words of a simple man, and his glory shall be dung and worms. Today he shall be lifted up, and tomorrow he shall not be found, because he is returned unto his dust, and his thought is come to nothing. Wherefore, ye my sons, be valiant, and show yourselves men of the behalf of the Torah, for all it shall be to obtain glory. And behold, I know that your brother Simon is a man of counsel. Give your ear unto him always, and shall be a father unto you. As for you, the Maccabee, he is a mighty and strong, and even from his youth up. Let him be your captain, and fight the battle for the, of the people. Take also unto you those who observe the Torah, and avenge ye the wrong of your people. Recompense fully the heathen, and take heed to the commandments of the Torah. So he blessed them, and was gathered to his fathers. And he died in 146, and his sons buried him in the sepulchres of his fathers at Moden, and all the Israel made great lamentation for him. Uh, chapter 3. Then his son Yehuda, called Maccabee, rose up in his steed, and all his brethren helped him. And so did the day that helped with his father, that followed, uh, that fought with cheerfulness to the battle of Israel. So he got his people to great honor, and put on a breastplate as a giant, and gird his warlike harness about him, and made battles, protecting the host of his sword. And in his axe was like a lion. And like a lion's whelp roaring for his prey, he pursued the wicked and sought them out and burnt them up, those that vexed his people. Wherefore the wicked shrunk for fear of him, and the work of the iniquity were troubled, because of salvation prospered in his hand. He grieved also many kings and made Yaakov glad with his acts, and his memorial is blessed forever. Moreover, he went through the cities of Judah destroying the wicked out of them and turning away wrath from Israel so that he was renowned unto the utmost part of the earth and received unto him that was ready to perish then uh, Apollo, Apollonus gathered unto the people together and a great host of Shemaron to fight against Israel which thing which Yehuda perceived and went forth to meet him so he smote him and slew him and he and many also fell down slain, but the rest fled. Wherefore Yehuda took their spoils, and Apollonus sword also, and therewith he fought all his life long. Apollonus, there's a mention of um, an Antichrist uh, spirit, um, Apollyon, um, where they built CERN, that's for the temple of Apollo. This is the same one. Sword also, and therewith he fought all his life long. Now when Sharon, a prince of the army of Syria, heard say that Yehuda had gathered unto him a multitude and company of the faithful to go out with him to war, and he said, I will get me a name and honor in the kingdom, for I will go and fight with Yehuda and him that there with him, who despised the king's commandments. So he made him ready to go up, and there went him a mighty host of the wicked to help him, and to avenge the children of Israel. And when he came near to going up to the Bet Keron, Yehuda went forth to meet him with a small company, whom they saw the host coming up to meet them, said unto Yehuda, How shall be how shall we be able, being so few, to fight against a such great multitude, so strong, seeing we are ready to faint with uh, fasting all this day? Unto whom Yehuda said, answered, it is not hard matter for many to be shut up in the hands of a few, and with the Elohim of the heaven is all o is all for one to deliver the great multitude or a small company. For the victory of battle stands not in the multitude of a host, but the strength comes from heaven. They come against us as much pride and iniquity to destroy us and our women and children and to spoil us. <coughs> But we fight for our lives and our Torah, wherefore Yahuwah himself will overthrow them. 
before our face. As for you, be not afraid of them. Now as soon as he had left off speaking, he leapt suddenly upon them. And so Saron and the host of was overthrown before him. And they pursued him from going down to bet Caron to the plain, where the slain, <coughs> about 800 of them, and the remnant fled into the land of Philistine. Then began the fear of Yehuda and his brethren, and an exceeding great dread, to fall upon the nations around about them, inasmuch as fame came unto the king, and all the nations talked of the battles of Yehuda. Now when King Antiochus heard of these things, he was full of indignation, wherefore he sent and gathered himself together all the forces of his realm, even a very strong army. He opened also his treasure and gave his soldiers pay for a year, commanding them to be ready whensoever he should need them. Nevertheless, he saw that the money of his treasure failed and that the tributes to the country were small because of the dissension.